dear students in our previous class in the lesson history unit 4 opposition to british rule in karnataka we studied about the four anglo mysore wars led by hyderli in the beginning and later continued by his son tipu sultan the major opposition to british rule from karnataka was led by hyderli and tipu sultan the first anglo mysore war ended with the treaty of madras second anglo mysore war ended with the mangalore treaty 1784 in the third anglo mysore war ended with the treaty of shirikapatna 1792 and in the fourth anglo mysore war which was fought in the year 1799 Tipu died while fighting at Srirangapatna in 1799. After the death of Tipu Sultan, the Mysore kingdom was shared among the British, the Rizam and the Marathas and a small portion was handed over, given back to the original descendants of the Vodayars of Mysore. And we will continue the lesson today. we will read about dondiawag dondiawag was from chennagiri major opposition to british rule from karnataka dondiawag 1800 dondiawag Many rebellions and protests against the British took place in Karnataka after the death of Tipu Sultan. And all these rebellions were armed rebellions. They were fought with weapons, arms and ammunition and took place during the first part of 19th century. Among them, the rebellion led by Dondiawag is an important rebellion. Dondiawag Dondiawag was born in a Maratha family of Chennagiri He was very popularly called as the Wag which means the tiger due to his bravery He started his career as a cavalry soldier in Hyderabad's army and grew to the position of military general Dondia built his own private army and fought along with Tipu Sultan. However, due to differences with Tipu, he was imprisoned, he was jailed. The British released him from prison after the 4th Anglo-Mysore War, that means after the death of Tipu Sultan. He built a small army and started his operations. He organized army with the unhappy soldiers of Tipu Sultan's army and the feudatory rulers who had lost power. He captured Bidanur and Shivamogga forts and made unsuccessful attempts to capture Chitradurga fort. Lord Wellesley tried to check this rebellion. An attack was organized on Shivamogga, Honnali, Harihara and other places under the control of Dondia. Dondia lost his base. After the capture of Shikaripura, Dondia ran away towards Gutti, which was under the control of Nizam of Hyderabad. When the Nizam's army attacked Gutti, Dundia had to run towards the regions of Marathas. The Marathas army attacked him and captured most of his horses, camels and arms. In spite of these, he continued his warfare. 
Many unhappy polygraphs encouraged Dondia work. The French at the Mahe of Malbar also extended their support to him. The British army followed him in the vast area that included Harihara, Chitradurga, Shikaripura, Savanuru, Ranibunur, Kistur and Londa. The British took over the Shirhati killed many followers of Dondiawak. End of Dondiawak Lord Wellesley decided to end the adventures of Dondiawak. He wanted to put an end to all the adventures of Dondiawak. The British now requested the help of local rulers. Dondia had captured recaptured Shikaripura fort and he was scattered by the British army again. The British tried to defeat the army of Dundia which used to move in the area between Tungabhadra and Malaprabha. They attacked him from all the directions. He was followed by them when he left Raichur. When he was caught between Maratha army and Nizam's army, the British attacked him near Yalaparvi and killed him at Konagal. With the defeat of their leader, the followers of Dondia scattered. The British captured a large cache of arms and ammunition. The next rebellion in Karnataka was at Kittur, the rebellion of Kittur by the brave queen Rani Chennamma, 1824. Rani Chennamma, her fort which is now in a ruined stage, this is the ruins of Rani Chennamma's fort. Rani Chennamma on horseback and that is the prison where Rani Chennamma was kept when after her capture and it is where she died. The British brought in many changes in administration after defeating the Marathas, Tipu and Hyderali. Denying the right of adopted children over the throne was one such rules. Students, we have already studied about this rule that is the policy of doctrine of lapse where the adopted children of the king, of the ruler, were refused the right to ascend the throne. So the rebellion led by Chennamma, the queen of Kittur, opposing this law is a prominent one. She opposed the policy of doctrine of lapse. Kittur lies between Dharwad and Belgaum. After the death of her husband, Mother Sarja, Chennamma, the queen, took active interest in the administrative matters. After the death of Mala Sarja, his son Shivalinga Rudra Sarja took over the control, the reign of Kittur. Due to his failing health, Chennamma had to take care of the day-to-day -day administration. Shivalinga Sarja supported the British during Maratha War. As a result, the British entered an agreement with Kittur and collected payment from him. This agreement was entered during the time of the British officer Thomas Munro. 
ఆఫ్టర్ ది డెత్ ఆఫ్ శివలింగ రుద్ర సర్జ చెన్నమ్మ అడాప్టెడ్ బాయ్ నేమ్డ్ శివలింగప్ప అండ్ స్టార్టెడ్ రూలింగ్ కిచోర్ యాజ్ ఎ క్వీన్ రీజెంట్ దెన్ ఠాక్రే వాజ్ ది కలెక్టర్ అండ్ పొలిటికల్ ఏజెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద బ్రిటిష్ ఇన్ ధార్వాడ he said sent a report to the governor of bombay and attempted to take over the kingdom under the doctrine of lapse policy we know rani chennamma had lost her own son shivalingurudra sarja after after which she adopted a boy named shivalingappa and started ruling kitor as a queen regent so by applying the policy of doctrine of lapse collector thackeray sent a report to the governor of bombay and based on the report the british attempted to take over the kingdom under the doctrine of lapse policy he attempted to take over the treasury and fort under his control chennamma considered war as inevitable chennamma now considered that there, is, there was no other alternative left other than waging a war so she prepared for the war meanwhile in the meantime the british also prepared themselves for the war so the war took place in the battle collector thackeray was shot dead he was killed many british were taken as prisoners of war the british attacked kittur again under the leadership of colonel deacon the army fought the battle very bravely chennamma now attempted to flee escape run away from the battlefield but she was captured by the british army chennamma and others were imprisoned at bailahongal fort queen chennamma passed away in the prison you can see on your right bailahongal fort and the prison where rani chennamma was jailed and spent her last days and she died in the prison sangolli rayana the name sangolli rayana has remained famous along with the name of rani chennamma he fought for the independence of kittor and felt it was his duty to liberate his motherland rayana fought against the british and was imprisoned along with her there are many oral histories about rayana regarding rayana there are much of oral histories because very less has been written about him we do not find any written histories about rayana so about rayana more of oral histories which are passed on from one generation to another generation from one set of people to the other orally according to that he developed a sense of nationalism and went on organizing an army rayana organized secret meetings at very sensitive places he aimed at looting the treasury and taluk officers of the british rayana had an army of 500 men he became very furious he became very angry with the villagers who were assisting the british army 
the british thought that raina was being instigated provoked by rani chennamma therefore hence they shifted chennamma to kusugal prison from the bailahongala prison the british devised a cunning strategy a cunning plan to capture raina they encouraged the desais who were opposing rani chennamma an amaldar named krishna raja joined hands with the british thus raina was cunningly captured and brought down to dharwad many of his soldiers surrendered after his arrest raina was declared as an offender and was hanged to death many ballads have kept the life and bravery of raina alive even today many short songs comprising of the life story of raina are even alive even they are sung today students on the right side of your screen you will find a huge tree it is a place where raina was hanged to death and uh, a memorial has been constructed by the authorities rebellion of amarsulya this rebellion was primarily basically a farmers rebellion a revolt of the farmers the amarsulya rebellion needs to be understood in the background in the backdrop of political situations which prevailed in coastal karnataka and kodugu regions during 1935 1835 and 1837 the british dethroned brought down from power the british dethroned the ruler of kodugu chikkavira rajendra chikkavira rajendra belonged to the haveri dynasty in 1834 after dethroning chikkavira rajendra from power from his throne he was transferred to vellore through bangalore and later shifted to kashi this incident created political instability in kodagu swami aparampara kalyana swami and puttabasappa organized a rebellion against this incident amarsulya movement all the three were declared that they are part of the haleri dynasty that rule kodagu all the three of them declared that they are part of the haleri dynasty that ruled kodagu swami aparampara assumed the leadership of the rebellion but he was captured in 1834 and shifted to bangalore similarly kalyana swami was captured in 1837 and placed in mysore prison puttapasappa the people of lower kodugu continued the rebellion after the capture of kalyana swami sulia bellare and puttur the major places of kenara region were part of amar sulia it is interesting to note that a farmer named puttapasappa as kalyana swami 
this puttabasappa later presented himself as swami aparampara when the two other leaders were captured and put in the prison puttabasappa presented himself as kalyana swami and swami aparampara to the people because people would get disappointed if their leaders were arrested they may be disappointed they may be demoralized and therefore puttabha puttabha sappa himself presented as kalyana swami and later as swami aparampara to keep the morale of the common people high this also notes the fluid nature of the rebellion puttabasappa took over the leadership of the rebellion the rebellion started in hilly region puttabasappa organized the rebels and calmed down the people he declared that tax on tobacco and salt will be withdrawn if the rebel government comes to power if the rebel government assumes power the rich farmers the land owners and local chieftains local chiefs were assured of this move the capture of government office in bellary was the first move the first step in this rebellion puttabasappa killed an amaldar who was known for his brutality the tamildar was very cruel he was very brutal so puttabasappa killed the tamildar this further increased the popularity of puttabasappa this incident gained more support for the rebellion and the rebellion became more famous the protesters the rebels marched towards mangalore to capture it the british were engaged in fortifying their fort in mangalore the rebels marched towards mangalore through pane mangalore and bantwal there they looted the treasury and prison of bantwal the british sought the british requested the army of talacheri kannur and bombay to quell to disperse this uprising on hearing this development puttabasappa and his associates fled ran away towards sulia the british captured them with the help of people in kodagu puttabasappa lakshmappa bangarasa kedambadi ramaya gouda and guddemane appaya gouda were hanged till death though the rebellion failed it has an important place in the history of rebellions against the british in karnataka students you can see the picture where the rebellions were being taken to the gallows to be hanged and in the picture on to the left the legendary guddemane appaya gouda who was considered by the local people as a great freedom fighter the next rebellion was of swarapura and koppal swarapura and koppal swarapura swarapura is at 50 kilometers from the present yadgir this was an important place since the rule of moguls this was an important since the rule of moguls 
during the reign of Nizam of Hyderabad and Marathas, it became a vassal state. It became a subordinate state. Later, most of the territory was lost and Surapura remained limited, restricted to a smaller territory. During the reign of Venkatappa, during the regime, during the rule of Venkatappa, it raised a rebellion against the British. This was Venkatappa Nayaka of Swarapura and these are the present ruined images of the Swarapura fort. Venkatappa Nayaka of Swarapura Venkatappa came to the throne after the death of his father Krishna Nayaka. So Venkatapa Nayaka was the son of Krishna Nayaka. He came to the throne after the death of his father Krishna Nayaka. Venkatapa Nayaka was born in 1834 and came to the throne in an early age. When he came to the throne, he was a very young boy. His ascendance, his coming to the throne, was opposed by Krishna Nayaka's brother Pedda Nayaka. Krishna Nayaka's brother Pedda Nayaka opposed Venkatapa Nayaka ascending the throne. This resulted in internal fights, in internal struggles. At this point of time, the British interfered in the affairs of Surapura. In 1842, the British appointed an English officer by name, Meadows Tyler, as their resident and thereby gained proxy power over Swarapura. Even though the, there were original rulers, but the actual power was being handled by the British. Meadow Taylor was a reformist. He was not a conservist. So after becoming the resident, he tried to br bring some reforms, some good changes. So Meadow Taylor developed Surapura princely state. He took interest in developing the Surapura princely state. And Peddanayaka was appointed as the Divan of Surapura the Divan of the state and Taylor also conducted land survey of the kingdom and as a result the revenue of the state increased due to the measures implemented by Taylor. He also took measures to educate Venkatapanayaka properly and he came to power in 1853. The Rebellion of Surapura The British government was observing the various developments of Surapura. In 1857 it came to be notice of government that the representatives of Nana Saheb were present in Swarapura. Students, we will be reading about Nana Saheb in the coming chapters of history. In the lesson, the first war of independence, 1857, and Nana Saheb was one of the leaders of the revolt of 1857, and Nana Saheb happens to be the adopted son of Peshwa Bajai Rao II, the last Maratha Peshwa. So the British came to know that Nana Sahib representatives are present in Surapura. This made the British 
suspicious of the king's intentions. They doubted the king's intention. The British appointed an officer named Campbell to report on various activities of the king. The officer submitted a report to the resident of Hyderabad that the king is involved in mal administration. Venkatapanayaka is usually presented as the leader of 1857 revolt in Karnataka by the historians. The British army captured Surapura in 1858. The war continued, but there is confusion regarding Venkatapa Nayaka's end. It means historians have not found definite evidence regarding how the life of Venkatapa Nayaka ended. Virappa of Koppala Another rebellion in Karnataka was led by Virappa of Koppala. The Koppal rebellion is an important rebellion against the British which took place in Karnataka. The Koppal and surrounding regions were under the rule of the Nizam of Hyderabad. There were exploitations. People were being exploited by the British. This engaged a few zamindars who revolted, who rebelled against the Nizam. Virappa is an important person among the rebels. Virappa, who was a zamindar, rebelled against the British and occupied the fort of Koppal and other forts in the vicinity. He occupied the fort of Koppal and some other forts nearby in the vicinity. Many farmers and zamindars supported after realizing his intentions, his motives. The British contacted the Nizam and employed their army to defeat Virappa. Virappa, who had lesser soldiers, died fighting the British army. After his death, the British captured back the Koppal fort. Though this rebellion was short-lived, Though this rebellion was very short one. But Virappa proved himself to be a good warrior, to be a brave warrior. Rebellion of Bedas of Halagali Rebellion, revolt of the Bedas, the hunters of Halagali. Halagali is a small village of Mudhol Taluk of Belagam district. Halagali was a part of the Mudhol Principal Polity, Mudhol Princely State. In 1857, the British banned the usage of weapons. The British banned use of weapons. The Bedas, the hunters, who always kept guns as a part of customs and the Bedas were very good hunters. Hunters usually carry weapons always. But carrying and use of weapons was banned by the British. So, they rebelled against the British when these Bedas were asked to surrender their firearms. Here, the Bedas of Manturu 
Budani, Alagundi, and neighboring villages joined the Halagali Bedas in the rebellion. The British army entered Halagali village to suppress the rebellion. They suppressed the Bedas in a very inhuman way. All the rebels were caught and they were hanged to death. So that was the rebellion led by the Bedas, the hunters of Halagali. Children, that is the end of history lesson number 4. And let us see the assignment. I given 5 questions. All of them are either from previous public examination or from the model papers. Question number 1. Why did the Bedos of Halagali fight against the British? Explain the revolt against the British at Kittur. Explain the rebellion of Bedas of Halagali. Why did the hunters of Halagali revolt? Explain the rebellion of Surapura against the British. So these are the five questions. Learn and practice them. Students, that is all for today. Till we meet again in the next class. Have a good day.